right, settle down. Settle down. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome into the Eric Zane Show podcast from the Impact Power Sports Studio. Impact Power Sports online at impactpowersportsmi.com. Um, I woke up with hair looking like that. Are you kidding me? Who rolls out of bed with perfect hair? I do. Thank you, King's Room Barbershop. They bring you my hair. Three locations, Northland Drive, Caledonia, and at 821 36th Street. I can't even look at the camera because I'm so looking at my hair. God dang, I don't know how you people tolerate it. I have a lot to talk about today because a lot has happened since I finished my podcast on Friday. Uh, I have been thrust into the middle of another goddamn personal saga from people that I don't even know who have made me uh, part of their lives. Um, I have nonstop people banging on my door saying, hey, have you seen this? Hey, oh my God, can you believe this? And I'm like, why don't you fucking people leave me alone? It's unbelievable. So annoying. All I want to do here is go on the air on the air, start broadcasting and show you all my hair and uh, maybe hug the dogs, uh, let a stink bug out the window like I do from time to time, talk about something that happened over the weekend. And because nobody across the street can get their fucking shit together on America's messiest morning show, I have to get dealt in again. More on that in a bit. But right now, I want to bring in somebody that's a hell of a lot more important than all that bullshit. Uh, The multi-talented Rick from TC Paintball. Good morning, Eric's here. I'm glad you like it, Rick. You know, I just realized I don't see you without a cover on your head. Is there something going on up top? There's not a lot going on up top. Okay. All right. All right. That's... When I was a kid, I had thick hair, and I wished for thin hair. And you, you got your wish. I got my wish. More than I wished for. Did uh, did mom or dad have thin hair? Um, Yeah, my dad my dad uh, thinned out. I'd call myself thinning out prematurely. He didn't thin out as premature as I did. I thinned pretty fast in my late, late 20s, early 30s. Have you ever considered, like, shaving it all off? No. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to consider. I, I, my, my, my imagination jumped to what I thought you were going to say. Oh. I thought you were gonna, have you ever considered, you know, a toupee or a plug no. or something? No, and no, no. Yeah. But yes, I do shave it off. I don't bick it. I don't like uh, go down to the skin, but I shave it all the way down to just stubble on on a pretty pretty regular basis. How about grow what the areas that grow really long? And then make super swoops that kind of fly all around. Super swoops on the old comb over? Essentially, so, yeah. Like growing so really a, long and ratty looking. I had a good friend of mine that, that combed my hair, a girl that combed, or that, that did my hair, cut my hair for a long time. And it was, I, I enjoyed catching up with her every six weeks or so whenever I would go sit down and, uh, and have my hair cut by her. And it was kind of like a social thing. I would go hang out and, and catch up with her and see what was going on in her life. And finally, she looked at me one day and she said, Rick, how long are we going to do this? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you'd probably rather hang out in just more of a social setting instead of me sitting in front of you and having my hair cut that I really don't need, huh? That's so true. She's right. She's right. Uh, Rebecca writes... Uh, they say hair loss in men is determined by their mother's father. I guess that means recessive. I'm not sure. I've, I've heard of that before, but, uh, like our kids didn't, none of them had red hair. Supposedly their kids have a great possibility of having, uh, red hair. 
Genetics is crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know it is. Holy shit. Okay. You know, just look at dogs. You know, they all come from the wolf. It's wild. I know it. Do you ever watch on uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever when people have those wolf dogs? Oh, like the really big ones like in Game of Thrones? Yeah, yeah. Like like they're actually part wolf. Oh, oh my yeah. God, is that cool? You get like a 220-pound dog. Jeez. Oh, yeah, that's real cool. That's frightening. Um, all right, so what did the weekend bring you, Rick? Uh, pretty busy weekend. Um, you know, it was, uh, wasn't the best of weather. Sunday was a lot better than Saturday, but uh, we had a good weekend outside, and, and it's my wife's birthday this week, so I took Sunday off, and we went out to our spot out in uh, Sandy Pines there and did a little yard cleanup and oh, yeah. some family together, which is nice. That's what Being you do. That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, a weekend-dominated industry I have been for so long. It's, uh, you know, when you finally get a weekend off here and there, you kind of pick your spots. It's it's nice to be able to relax on the weekend a little bit, like like the rest of the world, I guess. So I'm uh, going to be showing up with a bunch of pizzas from BC Pizza on Sunday, and yep. we're going to do Paintball War number 24, the April Aggression, uh, yes. at TC Paintball. Are we starting at 5 or 4? I always forget. Um, 5 o'clock is the start time. 5 o'clock is the start time. At yep. TC Paintball, it should be. I hope the weather holds up, and then we can we can do our thing. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a good time. We uh, I'll be working on the the village field a little bit more. It'll never be the way I want it uh, ultimately, but uh, we continue to make progress and uh, you know making it a little bit better. Rick, I had an ultrasound on my balls yesterday. Have you ever had this happen to you? Um, I had a vasectomy. I don't think they ever did an ultrasound or anything like that. Well, when you talk about like um. Like, uh, what the hell was that issue you had with uh, the bruised tube or whatever? Oh, yeah. That was uh, a, uh, my spermatic cord. Yes, the spermatic cord. I, I felt for you because I felt some tenderness there, too, when I was going yeah. through that process. So yeah. I kind of had an understanding of uh, what you were going through there. That was in 2020 that my spermatic cord was bruised, December of 2020. And it still hurts to this fucking day. Do you have uh, any performance issues in that regard? Not from that. I do have lots of performance issues otherwise, which I like, have like, I have detailed on this show. Like anxiety? No, no, no. My ding-dong doesn't work like it used to. Well, I mean, welcome to the club. Well, I mean, it still becomes straight as an arrow, but yes. um, the medicine I'm taking uh, makes it so that my, uh, my, my finishing move is not what it used to be. <laughs> No, no more world at the end. No, no, no. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, this is terrible. How embarrassing! But I'm like, fuck. I'm just gonna get out in front of it. You know, Jesus, whatever. It's just part of life. Yeah. Um. All right. So yeah, that, I'm gonna detail that drama with me. Um. Let's see. How how awkward is that? I mean, I know. You know, uh, getting a physical can be a little bit awkward, turn your head and cough and all that. Like, oh, yeah. You get ultrasound on it. I mean, are you sitting there trying to make conversation? Did you have to shave it ahead of time? Like, how did that work? Uh, I, You know what? After I hang up with you, I'm going to detail all that, and you can hear it and just, like, witness it because that, okay. there there is a story there. It's nothing too complex, and there wasn't a lot of uh, nonsense to it. Uh, it could have. It could have been nonsensical because I found out after the fact that someone I know could very possibly have been the one who said, oh, hey, time for your ultrasound, and I knew the person. Oh, no. And uh, so that I'll, I'll detail all of that. It's, it's fucking horrible. But it didn't work out that way, but it very well could have. So, I mean, if, am, I, am I getting ahead of myself if I ask, are things okay? Did the ultrasound produce anything that you need to be worried about? It's a great question because um, – I, I will say that what they do there is they, they have a look and then the person there has zero expert, zero expertise on interpreting it. So they, they get all the imagery. This is a person with like a two year degree. And then once they're done doing that, they then pass it off to the radiologist who then interprets and says, this is what I see and passes it off to my doctor who then calls me and says, Hey, you got cancer. Oh, <laughs> But I don't think that that is going to happen. But if it does, I'm ready for it. But I, I, I don't think so. Um, so we shall see. Okay. Well, best of luck in that yeah. regard. You know what's interesting just, is there's no, a, uh, I'm sorry, there's a shortage of radiologists in the world right now. Like literally, there's nobody that does this for a living. 
And uh, so it takes like forever to get the results back. So by the time I get the results back, I'll probably be dead. Oh. <laughs> Definitely if you look on WebMD, don't ever do that. No, I never do. I stay away from look, it. I stay away from it. No matter what your malady is, you end up in the same place with cancer, I think. Rick, did you check? Did you see the new black uniforms by the lot for the Lions with the uh, with the blue helmets? With the blue helmets, I absolutely did. Yes. I do. You like? I like. I, I'm a big fan. You know, yeah. I, when when. When NFL first started doing that, and then the, the first one the Lions had was the all like the all blue. I think it was the all blue jersey and the all gray pants and the, the plain gray helmet. Man, I remember those games when Barry was playing, and I mean it was just such a cool look to it. And every version that they've done since then, I've been a fan of the all black jersey's been really good. Uh, all those, all those are really good. And I'm a pretty big fan of most of the throwback jerseys out there. But that uh, that blue helmet, man, that blue helmet really sets it off. I really like yeah, that look. I do too. And in fact, um, so I found out that NFL teams can only change it up once every five years. And so uh-huh. when Dan Campbell started, he said. Because the blacks were way back in the uh, previous era. And uh, he said, I want to bring back the blacks. And the team said, uh, well, you can until uh, we finish the 2023 season. So as soon as that happened, there you go. That, that, that's another Dan Campbell thing right there. Love that guy. Yeah. Love that guy. All right. Well, Rick, have a good one. Uh, everybody needs to go see you over at TC Paintball and come see us on Sunday, okay? Yeah, what's our count right now? How are we doing? I don't know. I will get back to you this week, though. Yeah, let's keep a leaderboard, and uh, let's try to rattle the cage and get some bodies there. We're going to have a good time outdoor this time. You know I will. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man, see ya. Rick from TC Paintball. He always joins us uh, now on Mondays. So, I finished the show yesterday on uh, Friday. At this point, All that had taken place on this show. Rick says, no longer calling it trigger time. Of course, trigger time. Trigger time with Rick from TC Paintball. Um, Apparently, well, as this unfolded, when I do my show with the handful of people who listen, not a lot of people listen to this show enough so that i can do my thing pay for the roof over my head and have a creative outlet whenever anything messy happens on the free beer and hot wing show the first thing anyone does who learns anything is reach out to me it has happened time and time again i remember the first time it happened When Gina Rizzolo was ghosted in New Jersey after she attempted suicide and her beloved pal reached out to me and said, I just want you to know that this is what's going on. And I was tipped off to dramatics that I had never, ever heard before. It was right about the same time that um, our pal, any old Joe, uh, was busted having an affair and his uh, wife at the time went to jail. So I'm hearing all that shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? When Joe went to jail, one of the TV stations called me and said, do you know anything about this? What? Yeah, that happened. Um, quite a bit of time later, Some lady now known as Hurricane Ashley reached out to me. Recanting everything that happened to her from an incident way back when, now known as Flying Laptop Day. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, The latest uh, involves dramatics going on right now on that show. And I said that I would not break it down or speculate or anything like that. It's just that, God damn it, why do I always have to get involved? These things get served up to me on a goddamn silver platter all the fucking time. I don't need to hear about all your bullshit drama going on on your shitbag show. 
True, it's the only thing that's interesting, but leave me the fuck out of it. I spent the weekend getting various bits of information flying in from people that I don't know. And it was suggested to me beforehand that this would happen. People with ulterior motives would try to get me and deal me in and uh, explain to me what's going on from one perspective or another. It's like, look, unless I can get every single person involved in this on this show at one point in time, fuck that shit. And I was warned yesterday on, on Friday that these people would come out of the woodwork and try to get me to talk about this on this show. And the person who warned me about that was 100% correct. Uh, as you know, uh, every time you turn around on that show, there is something messy happening. There's always turmoil. And uh, all I have to do is wait. If I ever want any information about what's going on on that show, all I need to do is wait. Because I, I guess, am the first piece of... Uh, people first person people run to when the shit hits the fan and it's hitting right now now when i'm here talking to my 50 people on if i'm lucky on uh twitch and however many listen to the free podcast or pay attention on facebook i sit here and i'm like what the fuck is going on i keep hearing you know and having that conversation and then i get a lot of oh well you know you don't have to talk about it And you're right. I don't. I don't. But I'm compelled to for another reason. I hate Greg. If I were on the same page as Greg Neuenfeld, I'd keep that low key. I would not discuss anything. I'd keep it on the back burner. I'd cover it up. I'd uh, wait on it like the National Enquirer does did for Trump when it comes to the bitches he paid off. But this is Greg's show we're talking about. So you bet your ass I'm going to discuss it up to a point. That all changed, though, when it was a very human side was brought in when I was approached by one of the people involved in the drama. And I said I wouldn't wouldn't speculate any further. But I just wanted to make it known that the reason for my motivations, it's because of Greg. It's all Greg's fault. I hate that son of a bitch. So you bet your ass at that time I was going to dive in. And all I did, and you heard it, and you can go back and listen to it, is say, hey, I'm hearing rumblings that this is happening and this is happening. Boy, I sure hope that isn't the case. Boy, I like her despite the crispy R's and that's it. And then some fat bitch from the segment 18 Facebook group who has 20,000 fucking people that follows it took my show from Friday, which was titled is the free bear and outwing show where marriages go to die and reposted it on there and tagged me and the sweet lady involved in this fucking drama. You idiot. What a fucking asshole. Which is why when I blamed it all on you, dumb son of a bitches, that's why I did that. She was oblivious till you fucking morons tagged her. Way to go. Well, she quickly reached out. We had a nice conversation and I respect that. So when I hear more information and I have, fuck that. There's a face and a name behind it. And I said I wouldn't. But I will discuss about how you fucking idiots put this on the front burner for her in the first place. So fuck you. God damn it. Um, and when I write on the title of my show Friday, is the Free Burn Hot Wings show where marriages go to die. Let me tell you from experience. I was the first one that was going down that road. 
Thank God I got out of that fucking fiasco. I was the OG when it comes to being the one. I was on my way to being the first of the players on that show where marriages go to, uh, I'm sorry, where marriages go to die because of my indiscretions. But thank God I was able to uh, uh, pick up the ball and turn that around and through the goddamn grace of my wife many, many years ago was able to uh, rectify what I had wrong. And that was a blessing in disguise to get out of that shit show. Because I don't know if it's the quote unquote fame. Maybe it's the time away from family. Maybe it's the open bookness that you have with the audience. But we are looking now at the number of divorces catching up to the number of Super Bowl rings that Tom Brady has. All right. And all, I'm looking now at the only two we have left would be free beer number two and Steve. If those two happen, and I hope they don't, they would tie Brady. They are starting to make Bob and Tom look like Christian radio. When it comes to the record on marriages, what an absolute fucking shit show. Cole says, does that fat bitch listen to you regularly? I don't know. The one who posted on Facebook about me, no idea. I don't know who listens to this show. Also, that was a great headline about divorce. It's true. So then, uh, Kelly is tipped off. She reaches out to me and it's not good. And I was like, all right. I appreciate you reaching out. That's something I can get behind. I will. When people come out of the woodwork, and I was actually warned, be careful. People are going to come out of the woodwork to see you. And I'm like, you're telling me to talk to you and send you information about this, that, and the other thing. Don't fall for it. So I'm not. And I have gotten plenty since Friday. I will sit tight. But what an absolute pile of shit. My God. And... It all goes back to when everybody, uh, when it was posted on the Segment 18 Facebook page, because those sons of bitches, they act like they're fans of the show, but they obviously uh, wanted to hurt somebody by posting that um, my Friday show that was available. Hey, check this out. They act like, oh, no, we don't want any gossip. We don't want any of this. What a bunch of bullshit. So I went ahead. And post it on Facebook. Attention, EZSP audience and the losers from the Free Bear and Hot Wings sub and Segment 18 page. Kelly reached out to me. She asked me to quit speculating about what's going on. She was polite and respectful. So I agreed. By the way, um, full disclosure, when she first asked, I said, well, all right. I mean, I don't know how good of a job you're doing at uh, covering this up because you did this, that, and the other thing. And she gave me a litany litany of reasons why she did those things. And I said, all right, I'm reasonable. That's reasonable. I can get behind this. As I expected, she was totally cool. Outside of making fun of her crispy R's, I've supported her from the jump. I've said all along that she was the only thing worth a damn on that quote unquote show. I also pointed out that the only reason that I'm aggressive towards them is because of Greg. Throughout this week's speculation, I merely talked about audience online sleuth work concerning the current drama. The usual handful of losers took my content and ran with it to force her into making a statement. I hope you're proud of yourselves, idiots. Not including my audience. Signed, EZ. 
This one dumb motherfucker who's hated me for years, who only chimes in when I'm right, like now, writes, blame it on the listeners. It has been so much fun watching the demise of your mind, EZ. Show me one day when you didn't mention that show. Oh, but you are the best to critique it. Right. And it pays the bills? Not excessive to be unreasonable degree to an unreasonable degree or anything, though. LOL now. Yeah. I know what the fuck I'm doing. And I'm not in this business to have anybody tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to talk about. If I want to talk about something, I'm not going to overthink it and debate whether I should or shouldn't. I'm just going to do it. Who gives a fuck? Um, now it is to a point where a show member had to tell you to put a sock in it. It didn't quite go like that. Keep going till you get that cease and desist. I've done nothing wrong. I could talk about that if I wanted to go fuck yourself. I hate that show. This guy writes, and I stopped listening when you left. No, I am not a former Zaniac. You are fucking obsessed, dude. What a crock of shit. Believe me, I don't want to talk about that fucking show. I don't want anybody to deal me in on this bullshit. Make no mistake, though. What started out as a fantastically interesting story has become a little bit more complex. I appreciate the conversation, and I'm glad to be in a spot where I'm at right now. I've said it all along, not my story to tell, and it'll continue to be that way. My God. Speaking of Facebook, my God, there was was some interesting stuff to focus on uh, this weekend. Let's see. This is taken from Facebook. Here you go. I heard through the grapevine that there was a meeting of the minds. And uh, if you're only listening to the audio podcast, I'm going to play the audio, which features the soundtrack from the movie Jaws. And it's just a screenshot panning from left to right at one, two, three, four, five people sitting at the dinner table at some restaurant. It's titled The Plot Thickens. Former Husky Zaniacs get together. There's Jason. There's Andrea. What's up with that smile? It looks like she's farting. I think she's working hard not to show her chompers. Oh! Oh my God! You you had Jason? You had... Uh, Andrea, you had, uh, Dantica, hi, Katie. And you had, uh, Melinda there and Kenny. I knew it. Oh no. Oh my God. Now, before I throw the baby out with the bath water here. When we were all together, when the Zaniacs and EZ were all together, you had a lot of those Zaniacs talking about uh, how they didn't like Kenny. And I'd be all like, come on, come on, come on. And yeah, after the big uh, Zaniac exodus of 2022, 
yeah, Kenny still kind of stayed there and helped populate the thing. And occasionally there was comments about ratting out and mole, but it was, I didn't believe it. It was just said to be a joke. And I still don't want to believe it. But Tyler writes, what an M. Night Shyamalan twist at the end of this. So I don't know what's going on. Could this have been a, a judo maneuver, a black ops flipperoo by our man, Kenny? Why was Kenny hanging with those people with a combined weight of 1,200 pounds? What did they discuss? Ryan says perhaps it's some kind of AI conspiracy of sorts. Chris says, or is Kenny a double agent? I posted on the, on the chat. How did, how in the world did all five of these people smile or attempt to smile without food in front of them? And so here we are back on the show. Kenny adds, dude, I told, Hey mate, (laughs) I told you before you don't decide who I'm friends with. No, I mean, I get it. I know that I didn't want to believe it. And if you want to hang out, you know, I mean, I can't stop you from hanging out with a group of swingers who stalk me, try to damage my reputation, uh, try to try to do terrible things to me, mail me stuff in the mail, uh, haunt my dreams. God damn, eat up all the food in the area. If that's if that's who you want to hang out with, you go for it. This only fuels the conspiracy, though, about Kenny being a double agent. As you know, he's had many personal battles where he's gone back and forth on Patreon, canceling, uncanceling. I think that's the tug of war between good and evil. He's got the toothless former Zaniacs in his ear all the time. Kenny! Hey, Kenny! God damn it, motherfucker. If you want a piece of this pussy, one day you're going to have to fucking quit him for good. Now it's time you get on the winning team. I promised you I was going to eat elephant ears over your house, but fuck that. I can't do it if you still support Eric Tank, motherfucker. My God. Aram says, Kenny, did they come visit Nashville? Well, yeah, of course they did. I mean, um, you had Melinda there and you had uh, Jessica. Um, Unless if Kenny jumped into a car and drove to Michigan with Jessica and Melinda. But that is not possible because, um, honestly, two of them maybe, but three of them would have been an unbelievably difficult strain on the infrastructure of I-75 overpasses. There is zero chance. It says there's a warning. Bridge may freeze first. And no car containing these three people. Two yes, three no. So I think that the gruesome twosome of Jason... And Andrea uh, went to the local Myers and uh, 
gathered up pop bottles in the garbage cans to get enough gas money uh, to make it down for a trip of a lifetime to Nashville, Tennessee. All right. Now, once they got there, there's probably a good chance that they had to do some busking or maybe some pole dancing or I don't know what the hell, selling their bodies to get gas money to get back. So I don't know if we'll be blessed with their presence anytime soon up here, but God damn. Kenny says they smoke and or vape and I can't ride in a car for 30 minutes with that going on. No, you're right. Nick says that poor suspension. Johnny B zero said they had a semi. Now I know this. I know that Kenny is well on his way to losing a ton of weight. He's finally turned the corner. So this will be the last decade that Kenny will have road restrictions on him. If he is in the same car as Melinda and Jessica, but, but we have to consider this. Those two continue to grow. Jessica is starting to suffer blindness and that's not from ocular degeneration. It's because her forehead fat is starting to reach her upper cheeks. And so it's doing this. It's like each eye has its own ass cheeks. So in between swabbing parts of her body and just generally eating, takes a lot of time to live like that. Kenny says, I did good that night too. Grilled zucchini and baked skinless chicken and water. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Kenny is not a double agent, all right? He's not uh, operating on behalf of um, some of those scuzz people. But I think he needs to be very, very careful. All right? Don't suck a big black dick because I know you want to. You're damn right I do. So anyway... That video caught fire over the weekend with more than 5,000 of you checking it out. Chris writes that Kenny was just there for the sex. That's interesting to me because you've got Melinda who is not into dudes. You've got Jessica, you know, who just, there's got to be some odor issues. You got Andrea. I don't know what's going on with her. And Jason, who's just a big fucking wad of fat. Yeah, really interesting to me. A lot, a lot of activity. Pin Pusher says, why are we always talking about Kenny and Ashley? First of all, let me tell you this. I can talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about on here. And don't ever forget that. All right. Second of all, these people are the news. Every time I turn around, one of these two dick faces is doing something worthy of talking about. I don't wake up every fucking day and say, I'm going to talk about Kenny and Ashley. It just happens to work out that way. Do you think that I sit around and look for shit to talk about? Fuck no. I don't put that much effort into this shit. It just comes to me. Can't drop the E out of you. It's been too long since I've seen your your face and pictured your, or your uh, name and pictured your handsome face in my brain. He says, can you imagine the amount of smeg that was left all over their hotel? Jesus. Florida man says, you tell him, Eric. And then then writes, like Kelly G, uh, Cheese, those two are actually interesting. Yeah, and that's true, by the way. She's funny. She's talented. Uh, she's energetic. She's cute. 
She does have um, a disability, her voice, but I'm all for it. I love it. You know? Kenny writes, Aram, yeah, and when all the drama went down, I left that Facebook group as I didn't want any part of it, but the friends I made individually are different. Yeah, I get it, dude. I really do. But you got to understand, we hate each other. And they, for a long time, had nothing good to say about you. Nothing. But they kept it from you. I, on the other hand, tell you to your face how dumb you are. And you still love me. Because you know how I am. (laughs) Kenny, you have to... What if I did that? You must choose between they and and me. What would you do? Kenny says, I know for a fact Jason would never talk shit about me. Thank you very much. I can't say that I recall Jason talking shit about you. You're right about that. Kenny says, bye. I choose my friends, not you. All right. We're on the same page. I like that. I like that. And here's why I like that. Because for the longest time, you sat there at home. And if I said anything bad about you, you would sit there and go, oh, my God, my friends hurt me. Just so you know, and it's good that you do, we're all here for one thing only, to laugh at all these dumb jokes. You do not pay for Eric Zaitunian. You pay for Eric Zane. And I'm goddamn happy with your decision. So thank you for that. I got you. I see you, big fella. All right. Moving on. We need to talk about my scrotal ultrasound. And I am going to give this to you in blow by blow, step by step, ridiculous, ridiculous fashion. As I'm in the waiting room, I get an emergency phone call from Diana. She says, I go, hello. Oh my God. What? Jessica's working. I go, Jessica who? Jessica McCarty. Oh, shit. Does Eric have a staff meeting today? Yes, I do. Oh, I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Hello to you all. Welcome back. Welcome back. That uh, was wild. Here I am about to tell you about my scrotal ultrasound. And right at the exact point that I looked at the time, it said 11 a.m. Eastern, big fraud time. It didn't register with me that I had anything going on. I was right about to get into my scrot uh, tail. And then... Uh, show advisor, radio voice Linda, says, uh, shouldn't you be at your staff meeting? And I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. And then quickly uh, pulled the plug out. Right at that point, as I'm connecting to Zoom, my phone buzzes and it's the boss. And she's like, hey, it's time for the meeting. And I'm like, oh. perfect example of how I am teetering on the brink of disaster all the time, all the time. If it weren't for an army of women who take care of me, I would be dead. I owe it all to women. This is why they need to rule the world, frankly. 
Team Blue needs to do the rudimentary menial tasks that exist on the planet. Team Pink should be doing all the important shit that's not busy work. The dudes should simply be drones. Anything more than that, and it's going to get fucked up. So there I was in the waiting room for the scrotal scan. My phone rings. It's Pooh Bear. She says, oh, no, Jessica's working. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? Jessica McCarty. I go, why are you mentioning her? And you don't know who that is. It's a friend of the family. She grew up with Jackie. She's Jackie's age. Jessica does a, a scrotal scan. She's the ultrasound person. What? Yeah, she's going to she's going to scan your balls. <laughs> what? A person who grew up with Jackie, who I used to take to the girls basketball games, is going to be handling my balls? How would you react? Tyler says, I'm terrified something like this will happen to me on Wednesday. You're getting something. You're getting a ball scan. You're having the same thing done. Ryan says, God damn, that same kind of thing happened to me. Horrifying. Tyler says, I'm also getting the ball scan. We're, we've, we're all getting ball scans or have gotten them. Well, it's going to happen to you. So right away, I'm like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? So should I pull the plug? What should I do? And then, uh, well, at about the exact same time that the door opened for Jessica to come get me, Jackie texts me and says, Jessica is there, but she's not doing your scrotal scan. I'm like, oh, my God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, my God. And there's this lady. She goes, hello, Eric, Eric. I go, hi, how are you? I'll be taking care of you today. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Now, I want you to know that right now I am at like peak man muff. Uh, I have gone back old school 70s playboy muff. This big giant silver patch of shit muff. It looks like a goddamn Brillo pad. Gray and silver muff. I'm like, oh God, I, I'm like, I'm not even going to bother. No way. Because if you go and shave it all up nice and tidy, you know, it's just, they're going to get the impression that you did it for them. And that's weird. Ryan writes, when I went for the scrotal scan, the kid's sister of a dude I used to hang with in high school scanned my balls. Oh. She was a good 12 years younger than us and had to say this while scanning the sack. She's like, told you? Oh, I know you. You didn't know it. Tyler says, I've gotten one and it's not as bad as you imagine. First of all, back to Ryan's story. Yeah, she should not have said that. I know you. Is she scanning your balls? Oh, oh. So what this is, is the same type of uh, uh, medical instrument that they use to scan like a, the, the belly of mommy when she's, you know, got the baby in there. They're going to, you know, do some measurements and with the little track ball thingy, measure your balls and measure baby's head and whatever the fuck and all that shit. Uh, that's what they're going to do to your balls. Kenny adds, Ryan, did she add quote? And I used to have the biggest crush on you too. No, thank God. 
So I sit down in there. She goes, okay, um, this is what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to step out and you need to take off your, your, your bottoms and your underwear, take off your pants and your underwear, and then you're going to lay down. And then what you do is, um, with this towel, you, um, use it to hold down your penis. So like my penis is like, uh, against my belly. And, um, Tyler said, Tyler writes, did she say, do you remember me? The second she cupped your marbles in her hand. Truth be told, there's no handling of balls by a gloved hand. No. After your joint is against your belly like that, your balls are kind of there exposed. Then she takes the wand deal and she it's warm. So that's all right. And then uh, she just puts that uh, conductive gel on there. And then she just kind of scans away for like 10, 15 minutes. Nick asks, do they recommend the balls be full or empty? Uh, there is no comment at all about that. They, they do not say drain your balls before you go. No. Tyler says, should I arrive with my dick pre-taped up to my fupa? And then says, I'm assuming my balls should be fasting for this scan. I don't know. That's up to your doctor. I can't. Uh, they did not say that to me. They did not stress the importance of that with your old pal EZ. And then so I'm laying there and I'm like, oh boy. And then I had my phone so that I'm laying on my back looking at my phone like this while she's going to town. Can you imagine if I started looking at, at fucking porno? Uh, that's it. Nothing bad happened. I wish this ended in a climactically hilarious way, but there was no climax. It just kind of stopped. Uh, Ryan says, well, wait, you didn't have to hold your shaft with the towel the entire time. Well, no, that's what the towel does. Unless you got like a pin and the towel doesn't do anything. Do you have a pin? Because I got a monster. My beast was laying down and the towel held it down and the tip of it was looking up at me through the towel. Tyler writes, he's crushing candies while his candies were being crushed. No, it was fine. Didn't feel bad at all. She goes, okay, you can use these towels to wipe off the towel off all that goop off of your testicles and your ball sack. She didn't say ball sack, but she did say sack earlier. No, I was good. So then we'll get the results. Now I expect this comeback. And then they say, yeah, you're full of cancer. We got to cut your balls off like the unsullied. That's next. I hope not. I mean, whatever. Doesn't matter. Nothing will hurt me. I'm going to live forever. Ryan says, hurt like hell for me, but I had the torsion going, so I felt like I was going to die the entire time. Uh, no, I don't. I didn't have anything. Uh, I don't have really anything wrong with me anymore. I'm not feeling any pain. Okay, a new show for you to watch. I was tipped off by Radio Voice Linda, who said to me, look, I am outside of the house on Swan Street somewhere in D.C. in this gay neighborhood looking at the house featured in the documentary Who Killed Robert Wan? And you need to watch it so we can discuss it. And she convinced me to do it. Now that's saying a lot because I don't, I just don't watch anything. I go, what do I do? She goes, find it on Peacock. I'm like, hmm, I think I got that. I think I actually do have Peacock, and I do. I go, all right, I'm going to watch that fucking thing. She goes, I swear to God, as soon as you start watching it, it'll be like, holy shit. And when the first, there's only two episodes. When the first one ends, the second one, you're going to be like, God, give it to me right now. She was right. She was right. Uh, very, very good. Very, very good. 
There's a joke that I want to say that I, I said to her based on information from that docu. But if I give you the joke, it's going to blow a key point. So I'm a big uh, supporter of not ruining anything for you. All I know is that this was discussed some time ago, maybe not that long ago on an earlier show. I don't know if it was this one or the uh, uh, Patreon show or Ben and Eric, but Linda said she liked who killed Robert Wan. And he's an Asian dude, and he spells it W-O-N-E, I think. Looks like one. Looks like one with a W. Uh, like if you were to say the number one with a W, but it's pronounced Wan. Uh, take up two hours of your time. Linda, when she brought it up the first time, was like, this is great, this is great. And Amanda said, so-so, so-so. And... After watching it and hearing that Amanda wasn't, was lukewarm to it, that absolutely adds up because outside of her uh, desire, uh, her love of this show, she has the worst taste ever. It's, it's horrific. I it does not surprise me at all that you thought that who killed Robert Wan was only so, so. It was a fantastic documentary. If you like true crime documentaries like like I do, it was great. I give it uh, I give it fucking five stars, man. Uh, no one star review there. Very very good. Who killed Robert Wan? Is on Peacock. Watch it. I can say nothing more about it. If I, if I start to speculate and say this or that or where it took me, I can tell you where it took me. It, um, you have a lot of feelings and vibes like, how? How the fuck? What the fuck? How, how can that fucking possibly be? You get this type of desperation anxiety and it really pulls this emotion out of you and you want to just fucking go, no. And when shows that I watch do that, I'm like, oh, fucking shit. The last one that did that, did that to me was uh, uh, the one that focused on uh, troubled teen industry. American Nightmare. I think it was American Nightmare, wasn't it? No. That was not American Nightmare. American Nightmare was the missing girl, and then they thought the guy did it. Troubled teen industry. What was that called? It's about the goddamn school in New York. And all the kids were all like the kids who, uh, it's like a boarding school. What the fuck? You see, this is why it's not good to watch too much shit because then I, they all kind of run together for me. This was the one about, um, it's a school. Our very own Patrick attended one of those goddamn troubled teen schools. Uh, run by the same fucking maniacs. What was the name of that? How come I can't? How come none of you are helping me figure out the name of that fucking thing? God, now it's in my brain. I gotta figure it out. Troubled teen documentary. Netflix. Um. Is it called What Happened at the Academy of Ivy Ridge? That's not what it was called, was it? What Happened at the Academy of Ivy Ridge? I don't remember. The, uh, the program. That's what it was. Goddamn right. But the school was Ivy Ridge. I remember it now. Nobody helped me on that. Maureen checks in late. Adam checks in late with the program. Yes, that is what it was. All right. That is all of the material that I have to discuss with you from personal experiences. Me being dragged into yet another shit show, uh, free beer and hot wing show drama. Those goddamn motherfuckers. 
What a bunch of losers. What a fucking bunch of losers. Nick says a documentary called The Last Stop is another good one about. You wrote E-L-A-N, school. What do you mean? Spell that out for me again. Anyway, The Last Stop. All right. I could check that out too. Um, back to Freebear and Hot Wings. It's important to note that I'm getting very little information. I'm getting it in bits. I am getting more than everybody else, more than any of the players involved in that thought that they would be giving to me. But it is trickling in. There's two sides to that story. And I've heard a little bit of one. There is a lot more that is out that, um, and I don't even know if it will be revealed. Okay. But after my conversation with Ms. Cheese on Friday, I have some information from her perspective that I will take with a grain of salt And wait, because I've said it before, people that are involved in this story are reaching out to me to give me more bits of information. That continues to happen. And I was warned of that by Ms. Cheese. She said, don't buy into that. And it's like, okay, you're right. People are reaching out to me. But I will say that I don't know anybody in this. And I don't trust a single person. So whatever one of these fucking people is trying to do, they're doing it for a reason. Whether it be her reaching out to me, or whether it be randos who I've never heard of reaching out to me. Uh, that's, you know, something that needs to be considered. More than one sort uh, story here. One more, more uh, I should say, more than one side of the story. I can't even talk. Will we hear more on Patreon? No. No. Uh, At least not right away. I said that I would would lay low about that, and I meant it. I'm not going to go and uh, speculate further at this point in time. All right. As of right now, okay, I did 45 minutes to start. And then 69 more minutes or 24 more minutes here to put me at 69 minutes of show. All right. I haven't talked about even one of my sponsors. And I need to do so. So let me just say that Facebook and of course, Twitch are brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Follow me on both those platforms. Follow me on YouTube and uh, Instagram as well. Just search me out. There you go. And uh, I'm even on TikTok showing off my hair. Thanks to uh, several audience members who are supporting Green Medicine Shop after they heard about it here on this show. They had their big 419, 420 sale. And they, business was brisk. Thanks to all of you who showed up, got your med card. And mentioned to me, or mentioned to uh, the folks at Green Medicine Shop that you heard about them through me. Makes my life a lot easier. So thank you so much. Green Medicine Shop is a medical dispensary. And if you are under 21 in Michigan, you cannot, you cannot purchase cannabis recreationally. You have to purchase, uh, purchase it through the medicinal method, if you will. Get your med card. By going to Green Medicine Shop. I'm just going to tell you. If you're 18 to 21, you can't you, yeah, you can't smoke pot. Get the med card. Well, I don't know if I can get the med card. You will be able to get the med card. You can be smoking pot by the end of the day today. Go to thegreenmedicineshop.com. Come on. Everybody's doing it except EZ. Thegreenmedicineshop.com for more information. Berlin Raceway, back at it this weekend. 
I've got tickets to give away. You can follow it. When you follow me on social media, you will see the giveaway on Facebook. Uh, go to their website, berlinraceway.com, to get tickets for this weekend's upcoming races on Saturday. Should be good. Uh, I can't talk. What the fuck? Should be good weather. Berlinraceway.com. For more information, get your tickets uh, for a low price of just 14 bucks when you buy online. And um, parking is free. You can bring in a cooler with all your snacks and soft drink beverages. No alcohol, please. They have it there for you to buy at a very low price. And no glass as well. Racing at Berlin. The most affordable and most fun you'll have uh, all summer long at Berlin Raceway. Online at berlinraceway.com. When it comes to uh, having a pool installed in your home, there's only one crew that you need to call. The folks at Jenison Pool and Spa Depot. You can find uh, find them online. Um, just search Jenison Pool and Spa Depot, and you will be able to take advantage of, well, all the steps necessary to get a pool, in-ground pool installed in your home. In your backyard, I should say. Not you. I guess you could put it in your home. But more than likely, it'll be your backyard. Uh, they've got several crews working on that. That can help you out. You can also call them at 616-457-0500. They're on Chicago Drive, 970 Chicago Drive in Jenison. A uh, uh, blue facade to it on the uh, south side of Chicago Drive. And you can get all your pool supplies there. A lot of people who install pools, they don't actually have a brick and mortar store to buy all your pool supplies. But whatever you need, shock, those chlorine pucks. Maybe you need the pool open for the season. Jenison Pool and Spa Depot can help you out. That's 616-457-0500. The Pool and Spa Depot.com. That's the Pool and Spa Depot.com. All right. I already talked about King's Room Barbershop, but it uh, just in case you missed it, three locations Northland Drive, Caledonia. And 821 36th Street. It's impossible for your hair to look as good as mine. But they will try. Okay? When you combine unbelievably perfect genetics like mine with exquisite talent, this is what you get. So you get the exquisite talent. You don't have my hair, so you won't look as good as I do. But you got a shot at at least impressing the people that you know. Their website, kingsroom.net. Haircuts are 19 bucks. All dudes and chicks who like short hair get their hair cut at King's Room Barbershop. All right. Moving on. Eminem. I didn't know he was a goddamn addict. Celebrates 16 years of sobriety. He's working the program, too. He got his 16-year chip. Let me see if I can show this to you. I don't know if I... Yep, there it is. So how about that? Very proud, and he should be. That's not easy work. Get into the program. Work the steps. Work the traditions, and boom, just like that. A person who was ill is recovering. It's a goddamn miracle. It works when you work. I will say that. I usually don't like to get into too much about 12-step programs because it's anonymous for a reason. But when people decide that they're sick and tired of being a fucking loser and then go out of their way to dip their toe in and say, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I need help. 12-step programs save lives. It's not easy. But countless people have been successful where all the other attempts have failed. And definitely not something that you can just make somebody do. 
You better start this 12-step program or I'm going to leave you. Never works. Never works. The dumb fuck like me has to go and do it themselves. I shouldn't even say that. Uh, We're uh, uh, addicts. We all are. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. One bad day. I'm one bad day away from fucking it all up. I still have uh, dreams to this day that I'm drunk and I wake up so upset that I blew it. I blew however many years of sobriety it's been. What was it? 96, 06, 16. Okay, it'll be 30 years in 2026. So uh, that is a big, big deal that Eminem was able to do that. And as I understand it, Eminem was on the set of the film 8 Mile. And they were um, working 16-hour days making that film. And he was all fucked up and tired. And uh, somebody gave him an Ambien. And he said that that had a profound effect on his life. And he started taking all sorts of uh, uh, different levels of prescription medication um, at abusive levels that made him sick. And when he was able to start turning it around, all the um, medicines that he was taking, they had uh, uh, damaged the inside of his stomach. And the only way that his stomach would not be in pain would be when he ate. So there was a time when Eminem got pretty round. Now, I don't recall this. I'm not the biggest fan of his music. I'm a fan of him, but Eminem would be the kind of guy that I walk up to and say, oh, dude, I love that song, Lose Yourself. And he'd go, you like any of my other songs? And I go, no, they fucking suck. You're a big pile of shit. You're way overrated, but I love you. That's Eminem. That's what Eminem sounds like. He's a big pile of shit. Talentless hack. Anyway, um, He got fat as fuck. And then he says uh, he started to run in order to lose the weight. And now that's all he does in order to um, satisfy the addiction. You know, that's why I don't smoke pot. Uh, That's why I don't gamble. About the farthest I'll go is... If I'm up north by the fire or hanging out with Nick outside of the arena, I'll burn a dart and coffee. And I think at 54 years, soon to be 54 years old, the fuck was that? That's okay. Ashley writes, Oh my God. I met Eminem when the first Star Wars movie came out. He was at Studio 28th Street sitting next to me. Oh, my God. Kenny wrote, you met Eminem in 1977. She wrote, oh, no, fuck you. Fuck, I love you, Kenny, you fucking dick. The redo. The redo? The redo. That still doesn't tell us much. There was never a, you're so fucking stupid. You know that? You're so goddamn dumb. Oh, my God. When the redo of Star Wars came out, I was sitting next to Eminem. Whatever. Nice story.
You're such a pile of shit. Oh my god. Easy hasn't mentioned me yet. I'll say something fucked up. Because I'm a stupid twat. <laughs> Unbelievable. I can just imagine that interaction. Eminem like, yo, look, I don't know you. No, I don't want a hand job. Tyler says Star Wars Episode 7, The Redo. Chris says she's technically correct. No, she's not. You're just as dumb. Aram describes it as older brother EZ teasing his young sister Ashley. Oh, exactly. So true. Stupid idiot. She's always calling me a dumb fuck, too. All right. So anyway, back to Eminem. Uh, he posted that pic of him holding that coin. And um, so I guess this all 16 years ago, 2008. 02 to 8, he was, uh, it was Ambien, Valium, and Vicodin. He also had a near-fatal drug overdose in 2007. At that time, Eminem says, I was taking 75 to 80 Valium a night and said he isn't sure how he survived. What the fuck does Valium do for you? I, I, I wish, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, God damn. <clears throat> was that is that just to make you sleep is that for pain i mean my god uh he says he's not sure how he uh survived the year after he got clean he released a stick a uh, six studio album called relapse on that podcast that he was on talking about this eminem shared that he felt really happy about the drugs after the drugs left his system making relapse he added was the first time that i had fun recording in a long time though he had to relearn how to rap. You had to relearn how to rap. I don't, I don't believe that. I think that's hyperbole. There's no way that that's true. You had to relearn how to rap. You, you didn't know how to do it. Someone said rap. What? Huh? I don't know how to do it anymore. So I think that's bullshit. That's dramatic. He says it took a long time for his brain to start working again. I would argue that he still does not know how to rap. All right. Uh, it was my decision to get clean. Eminem raps on his 2010 song called Not Afraid. I did it for me. And admittedly, I probably did it subliminally for you so I could come back a brand new me. Is that from the song? Yeah, that sounds like he doesn't know how to rap. It doesn't even fucking rhyme. Eminem's most recent studio album, Music to be Murdered by, was released in 2020 on Jimmy Kimmel Live. And then in March, Dr. Dre tease that quote the real slim shady is working on a new album which is coming out this year well that's great i'm not interested in it easily the most overrated performer in the history of the music industry is eminem okay i like mom spaghetti song and I like um, where he says, it feels so empty without me. And then he goes, this looks like a job for me. That's the only one I like. Other than that, he's garbage. Chris says, next to Kid Rock. Yes. Okay, hold on a minute. Um, 
when you compare the two, Chris Rock, um, not Chris Rock, Kid Rock is less likable, but a better musician and performer and rapper. He's better at all that shit than Eminem, but he's such a pile of shit that I've soured on him. I can't stand that fucking dumbass. He's dumb as shit and he's a fucking psycho. And I think his career's done too. Cole says greatest rapper without question. Yeah, whatever. I, I, I can't agree with that. You haven't lived until you've listened to old school rap. All right. I would say you got to go as far as I would go in the conversation of um, greatest rappers as close to current as I would go would be NWA. NWA and before. You got to go NWA, Public Enemy, Run DMC, Eric B and Rakim, all those groups. LL Cool J, old LL Cool J, not new LL Cool J. That brings us to our discussion about a current rapper whose real first name is Gloria. I don't know her last name. But she goes by Glorilla. Which, boy, I don't know if I would have gone with Glorilla. But she does. Glorilla uh, got popped for a Dewey. Cop walks up to the car. Female cop. Glorilla rolls down the window. As soon as she rolls down the window, the cop says, Hey, I smell alcohol. And so it begins. And then the cop says, Hey, I smell cannabis too. I watched this every minute of this clip from TMZ to see if what I thought was going to happen happened you'll have to wait for it let's get into glorilla getting popped for a dui that is of course uh, road noise my apologies for that hey i'm officer carilla just want please so the reason i pulled you over today but yeah you heard right the officer's name is officer carilla Pulling over Glorilla. Hey, I'm Officer Carilla. Just want please. So the reason I pulled you over today is because you made a U-turn out of red light. Okay. Uh, okay. My GPS is taking me a while back. It was like, and it took me there. And it took you over there? Yeah. Okay. So do me a favor so we can get out of this roadway. Um, I'm going to need your driver's license. I'm going to go back to my car. I'll flash my lights at you. Whenever I do that, or whenever these were, whenever these cars pass us, I want you to turn into this turn lane over here. Okay, okay so that's it. Cops like, hey, we got to have a talk. You made an illegal UE, so let's pull over and discuss it. And Glorilla is like, ah, damn it. Okay. Okay, and just stay right there for me. Were you drinking tonight? Okay, there you go. That's the question. Were you drinking tonight, Glorilla? I like it. Okay, so I can smell it coming from my breath. Okay. Right when you roll down the window, okay? Yeah. So, uh, in a few minutes, I'm gonna have another officer come over here, and we're going, um, if you're willing, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. All right, how, ma- how many drinks did you have today? I'm cool. I'm I cool? Yeah, I ain't drunk or nothing. Okay, so, officer said, how many drinks have you had? And Glorilla says, I cool. I ain't drunk or nothing. Um, how many drinks did you have, Mike? I'm okay. Uh, that's not my question. Okay, you see, cop, that's not my question. Okay, now that's the first chance. That's Now we're getting to the point where the cop's getting annoyed. God damn it. Cop says, how many drinks? I'm cool. It's not what I asked you, Glorilla. 
I'm okay on Tim. Tim for it. Ma'am? I'm okay. Not only can I smell alcohol coming from your breath, but I can also smell marijuana coming from this car. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, yeah. in just a moment, I'll be searching this car. Is there anything that I'm going to find in this car? I have a, a gun registered to my name. She said, I have a gun registered to my name. So, Glorilla is uh, accused by Officer Carilla of uh, being drunk and smelling pot. And uh, Glorilla tells Corilla she has a gun registered in her name. A gun? Okay, yeah. where's the gun at? It's okay, you don't have to reach for it. Where is yeah, it? Yeah, he's in the car. It's okay, you don't have to reach for it. Okay, if that was a dude, white guy cop, she'd have been dead right now. Where is it? In the car. Yes, ma'am. May I? Where at? You can just in my for my seat. safety? Okay. Yeah, it's in and my bag seat. Where, is it like in a bag or? Um, no, he's just in the bag Okay. All right. Any um, marijuana? Not nothing. I can go to jail. That's not what I'm asking, man. Okay, I, I didn't catch what she said. And now the cops again doing this. Not what I'm asking you. I just want to know. I mean, I'm going to find it either way. I'm just, I mean, it's I can maybe smell like a, a two point something. Do you know who I am? There it is. Do you know who I am? Glorilla says, do you know who I am? Now, you know, there's only a handful of people, I think, in the world who can get away with, do you know who I am? Now, if you you have a face that is immediately recognizable, you will know it. You don't have to ask that. Well, Glorilla doesn't have a face that's immediately recognizable. Glorilla, Glorilla is hoping that Corilla is going to figure it out. But then, you know, obviously she's not knowing who she is. So she has to say, do you know who I am? No, I don't. No, no I don't. Oh. You said an opening. I don't, an opening way? No, what? it's called, it's called opium. It's kind of I, think I, I didn't catch that. I've heard of opium. I've like never heard of opium. She said, I've heard of opium. I don't know if that's a group. And then Glorilla says, but you never heard of me, though. Yeah, what are you hoping to do with, do you know who I am? Are you hoping to, oh, that's bad. That is so bad. Okay, well, you're not out. And her last name Woods, uh, from what I just saw. But oh, yeah, that's all. Uh, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, but yeah, it's okay. I'll wait on you. Okay, now, me on who you are. now she's embarrassed. It's okay, I'll wait on you. The cop says, Enlighten me as to who you are. I'll wait on you. Enlighten me on who you are. You're seeing me. No, because you still going to pick on me. You don't matter who I am. Pick on you. Okay. No, because you still going to pick on me. Uh, you don't know who I am. You don't know picking on you. You're driving I'm a, and I can smell alcohol off your breath. But I'm not drunk. I can tell you this. I can promise you that I do. But, uh, yeah. I'm on your TV. Would you submit to the road? Okay. Now, here's the roadside tests that they put Glorilla through. Now, I'm not sure if this is stage, these are stage clothes or what, but she's got a bikini top, and you notice it's digitized here. That's because her tit's sticking out. Even TMZ knows not to show tits out in the wild like that. Only an asshole would knowingly show their tits for the world. Side, and what if I don't? What's my right? The right yeah. is to say no. Yeah. You have the right to refuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're letting Glorilla know she has the right to refuse doing the test. It's voluntary. Yeah. It's voluntary? Okay. Are you refusing? What would you like to do or you like to refuse? I would like to refuse. You would like to refuse? Ma'am, you're, um, cover up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So... Corilla covers up Glorilla's titty. Um, all right. So do me a favor to sit right here for me, okay? Okay. Can you tell my brother y'all names? Yeah, yes, ma'am. We're going to go talk to him in just a moment, okay? Okay, now they're making the arrest of her. Can I take my jewelry off, my, off me? Uh, Can you take it off me and give it to him right now? Yeah, actually, that's fine. Yeah. I'll let you take it all off. And just, I'll, yeah. I'll Let's yeah. take off her jewelry. She has a lot of jewelry on. Now, if you want to put it directly in his hand, then, you know, she's going to keep three rings right here. I told you that I, you don't want to put it in the 
No, that's fine. Do you have any other necklaces or anything that you yeah, just Yeah, I have take? a necklace on me as well, yeah. Okay. Uh, she seems pretty sober, I have to admit, you know. Can you let me feel down the road? No, ma'am. We'll get to the jail in just a moment, okay? I think this has actually gone fairly well. Again, it's probably because the cop is female. If this were a man cop, this would be fucked up. Kind of like what I was talking about earlier in the show. Women should rule the world. If we had all lady cops, we wouldn't have the bullshit going on where every time a white cop pulls over a black guy, the black guy or girl winds up dead. This is great. And th- these two are probably going to kiss. Gorilla and Gorilla are probably going to make out in the back. You've never been to jail? I've never been to Gwinnett County Jail. Do I get out to jail fast? Uh, that is on them. I don't know their process. I have never worked there. Oh, my God. Y'all have doing the most. Thing. 107 right here. 295, one female. All right, we're going to get right back what here. All right, put her in the I car. Look at everybody's playing nice. Yep. Nobody's getting their uh, brains bashed in. Very pretty lady, by the way, getting in. Very pretty. So I'm going to reach over you and grab the seatbelt, okay? She's like, sure thing, Carilla. All right. Where do y'all show the testing? Ma'am? Where the test come up in? What test? The test that it prove I'm drunk when I know I'm drunk. No, that is different. That's a different So one. can I sue y'all if y'all take me jail for no reason? Um, she says, are you taking me to jail for no reason? Now, I, I, I mean, who knows? Maybe they got a warrant. We're able to get some blood off of, uh, Glorilla, uh, to be able to, to determine how much alcohol was in her system. Aram says, Tom Hanks can say, can say, don't. Do you know who I am? Or maybe say, yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to say it just because his face is so recognizable. Very, very few people have that. Uh, very an, Another handful of people have can have success saying, do you know who I am? But definitely, definitely not Glorilla. In fact, I would say that anybody alive, your best bet is to just keep your mouth shut because once that embarrassment gets out that no one knows who you are, you're going to be like, God damn it, take me to jail. Now, if they say to you, hey, are you, then it's fair game. If they, because that's happened to me many times. I used to get pulled over uh, three, four times a week on the way to work at the radio station at GRD. And um, they would come walking up to the car and the first couple of times, it was like, hello, sir. Uh, how are you? Do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, probably speeding. Yes, sir. You were doing 42 and a 30. Um, where, where are you off to in such a hurry? Uh, work. Oh, yeah? Where's work? Downtown Grand Rapids. Oh, yeah? What do you do? I work at GRD. Oh, really? Oh, hey, are you on the morning show? Yeah, actually, I am. Who are you? Oh, I'm Eric Zane. Oh, my God. Well, this is fucking great. Go on. Get out of here, you knucklehead. And I could have been on on crack. I could have had a baby's head next to me, and it would have been no problem. Hey, that a baby's head there? Yeah, I just killed this kid. Oh, okay. Go on. And then it was like, I get pulled over like two days later. Oh, what are you doing, Zane? Would you slow down? I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. Get the fuck out of here. Never got a ticket once. At that point, they're like keeping track as to who can pull me over. They've like got bets as to who can pull me over the most. Chris writes, ah, let me get that baby's head for you, Eric. I'll get rid of it for you. Yeah, thanks, man. No problem. Aram says Zane used to taunt the cops on the air after he got a warning. I don't remember that. I know that every time I would get pulled over, I would uh, I would say, so are you doing anything? Are you promoting anything? Yeah, we got the chili fundraiser for the area homeless kids. Or, uh. We got the big uh, 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 fundraiser basketball team with the local fire department. 
So then I would be like, all right, the cops are going to kick some ass this year against those scumbag fire department guys. You're going to want to get your tickets to the big charity fundraiser. Go to uh, thinblueline.com. That's the only way that works out. But you can never say, do you know who I am? Tyler writes, this was clearly before EZ started driving 15 miles under the speed limit. Chris adds, so what happened to you? You talk now about being a proud Nancy on the highway. I don't know. I just don't know. But I, it's a real point of pride for me to um, go under the speed limit. I'm hypermiling. It's like a game. You know, that was a regular thing with me. Those pulled over moments. Kenny adds lack of semen equals driving slower. The question I have for Kenny, and I doubt I'll get a straight answer. When you meet up with those four people, the former Zaniacs, who ate the most? That's what everybody wants to know. You said you behaved at the big dinner. Who ate the most? Which of them was most intoxicated? My bets are Andrea drank the most. Most food consumed was Jessica. That's, those are my thoughts. My bold predictions. Tyler writes, I thought he was wondering who ate the most vag. My God. Anyway, back to Glorilla, who this is a rapper that you guys now know of. I might need to bust out some Glorilla here. Uh, Glorilla video. Glorilla has a video out for the song Yak Glow. We can jump on this one. 24 million views on this right here in two months. So Glorilla is someone. Now, I like this. I don't know what she's saying. There's those rings she's wearing. But this is a million times better than anything Eminem has ever done other than Mom's Spaghetti and This Looks Like a Job for Me song. Slapping rap beaches and making bail, ho. And she is beautiful. Yeah, glow. Two-tone Cardi, yeah, match the nails, ho. Yeah, glow. No competition. These beaches stay a ho. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah, glow. No competition. These bitches is stale, yo. Yeah, glow. Curbing, no curbing. My shit is layers, ho. Yeah, glow. Say they get money, but I can't tell, ho. Okay, see? This is the point in the video when Glorilla is fed up with the boss at the restaurant and she quits and gives the apron back to his fucking white bald ass. Yeah, glow. Keep 
Fuck Zuckers you. Snail, He's like, what the fuck is your deal? And my shit bumping up in the jail. How on the big where you been at? Mine, every brown working hard. Maybach and G wagon truck. Got M&M's in my garage. Quick the All right. Well, I, thought I got a new favorite fucking rapper right here. Uh, Chris says, it's way better than that song. You think you're the shit fart. Who I, you know, I forgot who's saying you think you're the fit sh uh, fart. I agree with that. That is way better than you think you're the shit fart. I am a, I am a fan of that. Maize and Blue calls it trash. Disagree. Disagree. I thought I think it's quite good. I like all those uh, lady rappers like that. Uh, Cardi B, Megan the Stallion, and now Glorilla. I'm a big fan. Okay, so the DUI. The, uh, the the cop doesn't know who Glorilla is. She did finally submit to the breathalyzer. And um, she was hauled to jail. She posed for a mugshot. Sat in the drunk tank until it was time to go home. She has not addressed the arrest yet. According to TMZ, but it says the moment Glorilla's boob popped out during the entire interaction shows up here and she hardly noticed it until the cop pointed it out. Yeah, sometimes chicks just don't give a shit when their titties are out. We all know that around here. We have our very own Glorilla here on the show. If we could get Hurricane Ashley to do some gangster rap like that, you know, if we could get her to do that song, I mean, we all know she loves to show her titties to everyone. She's currently not working because she got shit canned and then blamed her old pal Easy. And, uh, I mean, she's got the time. She's got the energy. I think she's got the chops. I sell my titties and put them in your face, yo. Yeah. Why not? I don't think she's here to talk about that, but I think we need to focus on getting her to start her rap career. All right. So that concludes this portion of the show about Glorilla driving drunk. Hello to you, O'Neill. Incredible. Yeah, you crazy old white guys don't know talent when you see it. All right. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, I'm sorry, sponsors to talk to you about. Much to the chagrin of Matt Kuypers. But look, you all have answered the call about engaging my sponsors. And I am very appreciative of it. So whatever you do, don't ever deny me that or deny them that. Yo. Let's start with Frank Fuss. When it comes to getting health care on the marketplace, there's only one person that you need to remember, and that is Frank Fuss. Go to buyinsurancehere.com. So Frank can help you every step of the way. It's not easy business getting all that done through healthcare.gov. And if you screw it up, you're stuck with it till the next enrollment period. Have Frank do it and get you into uh, an insurance policy right away. Whether you're in between jobs like Ashley, you work uh, on your own in your own business like EZ, or perhaps your boss does not offer insurance like everyone at Bosco's. You need to get in front of Frank Fuss so he can help you uh, navigate the marketplace. No charge when you work with Frank. Go to buyinsurancehere.com for info. The latest person who shit can me is Mario from the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. You're like, what? 
I don't know. I can't say for sure. At the very least, I was usurped with my um, uh, PA job for the West Michigan Ironmen football team. When it comes to getting a mortgage, I want you to keep Mario in mind. When you are ready to get that mortgage, to get pre-approved, call Mario from no matter where you are in the U.S., 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505. Tyler writes, I'm trying to come up with a good rap name for Ashley. Yeah, I struggle on the fly when it uh, comes to that. I'll I'll leave it to you. You're, You're the show writer, for God's sake. That is a great thing. My Vouch store is open at vouch.store slash Eric Zane. Check out the products that I've uh, joined forces with, Creators Meeting Small Business. We've got the uh, Impact Massage Gun for you to check out, the Mini and the Big the big One, the Camp Craft Cocktails, the Dog Snacks, the Dog Treats, Dog Food, Dog Supplements, the Hygiene Product, the Toothbrush, uh, not to mention the Coffee, Split Rock Coffee in both Whole Bean and Ground, Buy it at the Vouch store, vouch.store slash Eric Zane. As always, Irvine's takes care of the cars in the easy household. 616-532-6600. Keeping you on the road, whether it be a uh, traditional gas motor, an EV, or a hybrid. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. Smack dab in the middle of Grand Rapids can help you. 616-532-6600. Ask about the loaner cars. So that you don't have to worry about somebody carting you around while your vehicle gets repaired. Just call them whenever you have a problem. And if you wind up on the side of the road, okay, just have the tow guy deliver it to Irvine's. And of course, we finally cannot forget about the immortal Joe Martinez. 616-516-8579. We're getting ready to start this whole tune-up season uh, with the AC. Weather's uh, warming up. It's time to get on the books. If you've never had this done to your AC, uh, you are on borrowed time. You're going to experience a breakdown. You take that cover off that thing outside of your house, that goes, that deal, it needs to be clean. Those little uh, metal fins are loaded with dust, dirt, debris, pollen, uh, cotton wood, I think is what it's known as, and a little shit that comes off the dandelions, and uh, the fucking thing can't breathe, and it's going to break down. 616-532-6600. Call that fucker today. I saw his ass at the hockey game with his right-hand man, his son-in-law, David. Great family. Your asshole of the day. Um... I don't know if you can see this. My dry erase marker dried out. I got to grab the other one. Maureen got me a whole bunch of them. My apologies. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's Glorilla. Driving drunk is no good. So that is your asshole of the day. You could kill somebody. There was a story I saw south of Detroit where there was like a, uh, a school, a birthday party for eight-year-olds. Did you see this over the weekend? And she should be the asshole of the day. But I just remembered it. Drunk grandma, 60-something years old, is shit face, driving around and somehow loses control and the car smashes into the building where the birthday party is. Okay? Two kids that are brother and sister passed and 15 more injured. That's the fucking type of thing where you should just be able to drag that bitch out of the car and, you know, bash her brains in till she doesn't even resemble a human, you know, fucking terrible. Kenny says, yeah, let's cover up Glorilla. God damn it. Hang on. I got to go over the other marker. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Because if I don't go get it, I'm going to be doing the same thing tomorrow. You know? Because as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to... All this is going to leave my memory bank. I'm not even going to remember that I, uh, that I did this. I think some of you even sent me that story, but I didn't get to it. I mean, it's okay here because we're talking about Glorilla. Where was this at? Kenny said, I believe the community is called Taylor, Michigan, just south of Detroit. I'll include it in the show notes. No, I won't. Uh, Glorilla and Drunk Grandma are your assholes of the day. Uh, Drunk Grandma, obviously, is the bigger asshole. Because she killed kids, you fucking idiot. All right, that's it. Have a good one. I will talk to you on the Patreon. Until next time, bye-bye.